For years, Clearwater County has had a housing shortage simply because it has not been able to build enough housing to keep up with demand. This is partially due to the lack of readily developable land within the cities and the owners of the lands directly adjoining the cities being unwilling to sell their lands or develop it themselves. However, with the completion of Interstate 98, property owners in more far-flung areas are beginning to see that their lands are becoming viable for suburban and exurban development. One of those property owners is Chu Vang, who owns land across the river from Johnson's Creek and has been quietly working with a local planning consultant to design a plat for a new development. His goal is to design the entire neighborhood and develop it in three phases. He would sell off each parcel one by one to individual homeowners who would bring their own builders. He would develop the roads, utilities, and parks as his budget allows, and would ultimately develop the most expensive parts of the community, including the town center, which would include a shopping center, apartments, and a small gathering space for events. With a plan this ambitious, he requests annexation into Johnson's Creek, since he would like the area to have urban amenities, including trash collection, water and sewer service, and a public library. Figuring it's their time to shine, Johnson's Creek jumps at this opportunity since it would significantly increase their tax base and bring commercial development to an area that's starved for it. In today's episode, we're going to lay the foundation for this new development. We'll start out with a SWOT analysis to determine the key features of the planning area. Afterwards, we'll begin master planning the community, laying out the roadway network, and then planning all of our land uses, including the location of our parks, public services, and our town center. Then, we'll begin to implement the plan by implementing phase one of the community, which will be all that you can afford without making some sales. And if you like master planning communities, hit the like button. And if you prefer organic layouts, hit the like button for that too and let me know in the comments what you prefer. And if you don't want to do that, just leave an emoji for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays where we are building Clearwater County and we have a good one today. We are going to be master playing an entire suburban community. So because it is a suburban community, you can take for granted that there will be a lot of residential in this area and there will be a significant focus on roadway hierarchy. But I want to do a good job with this community and really think about its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So we are going to perform a SWOT analysis first. So the very first thing that you think about in a SWOT analysis is the strengths. So zooming out a little bit, we can see that it has excellent access to the highway system and some really unique geographic features, including this hill right here and this lake. So we want to preserve all of these things as we design our development. Then there are a couple of weaknesses as well, and the highway is one of those weaknesses. It is loud, there are lights, and we're gonna to need to plan uses around the highway that either take advantage of that or we're gonna to need to block the highway from our residential uses. There's also a lack of connectivity to Johnson's Creek, and we're gonna to need to really think about this and ensure that we're making connections that make sense. There's also a lack of commercial in the area, so that's gonna be a problem for anyone who moves in here. And there's also a lack of transit, meaning that people are gonna be stuck in this area if we don't bring it to the area at some point in time. But there are a lot of opportunities as well, and one of those opportunities is the lack of commercial because it means that if we zone for it up front, it will build immediately. There's also strong regional residential demand and strong support of the Johnson's Creek government. And then finally, our threats. If we don't design our roadway network appropriately, we could create a major source of traffic in the neighborhood. We could link up this highway to this expressway and funnel a whole bunch of traffic right through the center of it. So we wanna be really thoughtful about the way that we're designing our roads. And second, we need to make sure that we're planning our land uses appropriately. If we end up creating a bunch of congestion on the expressway or the interstate, we can make this whole neighborhood completely undesirable. And on that note, let's start designing our roadway layout. So I wanna use planning roads for this. So we're gonna use these 2U planning roads for almost everything except part of our collector coming through here. And I want to make sure that we are entering the neighborhood with enough space from this interchange that we are not creating all sorts of traffic backup into the interstate. So I wanna set this back about a quarter mile. And a quarter mile is about 1,320 feet or 400 meters. And that should give us enough separation that we're not gonna create lots of backups. So we're gonna begin right about here. We'll run this road up and I'm gonna take it 20 or so meters for now while we turn our contours on. Obviously we're directing right towards the hill, which is not something I want to do. I also want to think about this as a collector couplet and we're going to need to do something special with our stoplight here because this is going to be one gigantic intersection. And with this, I'm going to run this road along here, send it this way, and then I want to mirror this. And now I want to send the road on the side of this hill here 
with enough separation that we could have some land uses develop along here. And this is really the heart of our community. So I'm gonna send 50 units right here. And thinking about this, we're gonna upgrade this. This will be a for you road. But let's go into our network multi-tool and make our connection here. So we will use our create connection mode and then we'll parallel this until we get to a straight segment. We'll have to union these nodes over here to keep these roads together. And I see that we've got an extra node there. I don't want to run into problems with this, so I'm going to get rid of those on either side. And now I want to bring these roads together. So I'm going to eyedropper this and bring this right in nicely. Now, one of the things that I want to get rid of is this road bending. I just want this to smoothly come in and we'll do this over 15 units or so. And now I want to upgrade this road right here to be a four unit road. So we'll use our four unit planning road. And I'm going to go into node controller, control N to try to clean this up. It looks like it might not be salvageable. We might need to do this again. And we'll do something like that. And then I want to bring the roadway into our existing neighborhood. This is going to be really important if we want to have some sort of connectivity. This isn't going to be a big bridge, but we're only getting one most likely. So we really want to make sure that we're connecting that area that makes the most sense. Now we're going to come at this with this for you road, even though we're meeting up with a two lane road. And you see this from time to time where you, you see where the community intends to go. <laughs> Eventually, they want this to be a four unit road, but for the time being, it will not be. So we're going to line that up very nicely. And then we'll go again with our two unit road. And I'm curious if I could use node controller to make this line up really nicely. I'm going to send this over this way and then I'll straighten that out. So it looks as though uh, you're kind of merging in this way. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It, it's probably fine. <laughs> it's probably fine. And now we just need to connect these two ends up. And again, I'm going to use the create connections mode for this. It's just going to be the easiest way for us to get some nice connections. Now, one of the things that I noticed in the comments, it was mentioned that I wasn't using this quite appropriately. So let's say I pull this over and I get that looping. If I come over to the side with the loop and I double click this, the loop goes away. That is such a key fix for this. I didn't know you could do that. So, so to the commenter that left that, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Then we hit enter and there we go. There is the main body of our roadway system. And this is going to be really important. And I'm directing this this way so that we do not create an arterial through here. So we're saying that this is a collector. It's going to collect all the traffic in our neighborhood and bring it to this road. And that's all that this does. It could also connect us to the other neighborhood, but we're not going to act as a cut through. I do want to have a road that connects up to this, but we're going to make it very indirect. The first thing I want to do, though, is think about the area right here. And this is likely going to be our first phase. It'll be the most valuable part of our development, and it will be the closest to our existing development. So this road is going to be really important. Now, I want to back this up. We're going to say 20 or so units from our roadway so that we give enough separation that folks don't feel like they're on the road. So we'll pull this back 20 units. And I'm just going to delete this now. And this road is going to loop all the way around and it gives some really nice waterfront lots. So with that in mind, we're going to send this for the most part straight to start out with. And then we'll freeform tool it and start to think about the amount of develop developable lots we, get, we can get after that. So I don't want to just leave it like this, though. So we're going to do something that I haven't done before, but I think could be really valuable here. And that is in a couple of locations, I want to create eyebrows. So you might have seen these, but basically what they are is a small bump up. So we'll go up maybe three units and then go into node controller control N. And we're going to take this and make it, let's say, 200 percent. And then we'll go into move it and grab this and hold down alt and pull this in. And then again, go into node controller and I want to get rid of the marking here. So we'll just get rid of all of the marking. And what this does is rather than being able to place one house on this, now you can maybe get three or even more. So this happens a lot in suburban environments. It allows you to really maximize your development area without adding a whole bunch of roads. So that's why you see this. So the one thing that I don't love is that it looks the sidewalk looks a little bit stretched. We'll need to think about ways to improve that. But for the time being, we're going to be OK with that. We're also going to cul-de-sac quite a bit. So I'm going to try to control the distance of the cul-de-sac, but we're still going to do so. 
I want to come up at least, let's say seven units though, so we can get a house on either end if we're going to do that. And then we'll turn sharply so that we get homes on either side. And we don't want to make this too long, but we want to make sure that we can develop basically everywhere along the cul-de-sac. And then again, it's the 200%. And then I'm going to control N back into node controller. And I want to add a new node right after it turns red. And that's how you get the bulb right there. So that looks absolutely perfect. And we're going to add maybe a couple more. Maybe we'll do something else through here. Maybe we'll add just a little bit of a horseshoe. So we'll send this back. Again, we'll go five units so we can get a house on either side. And then I'll send this over two units. We don't want to make this too big because ultimately who maintains this? It's probably the city. And if it's not the city, it's an HOA. I will send this back a little ways though. And the main reason for that is we are gonna to wanna to make sure that we can develop a whole bunch on here. There we go. So we can get some houses along this road, along this road and along the horseshoe itself. And then we're gonna add a few more of the little eyebrows through here. And this should be good for this area. Over here, we're gonna have a whole bunch of cul-de-sacs and I absolutely hate when I see stuff like this but that doesn't mean I don't understand why it happens. I do think it's probably pretty pleasant if you want a more rural character to have just a cul-de-sac street ending like this and then maybe having a few going into the hillside here. No one's coming down your street. So from a sense of privacy standpoint, I get it. And then for this property right here, there is excellent visibility so if we do anything here it's likely going to be commercial development or even some apartments uh, but not single family not in this particular area so let's add our cul-de-sac bulbs here and there we go i think that we have done a good job of maximizing our land here i think we could probably do for one more eyebrow over here as well there we go so that is likely our phase one for development but we're not gonna finish right here. I want to continue to design this roadway network. So this right along here is gonna be a fairly straight road that has some sort of shopping center. So this is likely where our town center is gonna be. We're gonna be focusing a lot of those uses right at the heart of the community. So as you enter, the first thing you see is those commercial uses. And I don't want this just to completely loop around our highway and create another kind of arterial out here. So we will have a road that again is set back about 20 units. However, we're not gonna directly connect these. So in terms of the size of our roadway network here, I wanna give some separation to our uses. So what I think we're gonna do is go with at least 15 units of separation in between all of our roads here. And we'll loop this in. So I'm gonna create a lot of temporary roads like this where the point is not to create a permanent road, it is just to, to measure things out a bit. And we're gonna create a road that parallels our existing collector through here, but is a local road instead. So it's gonna come up that way. So what we're not doing is providing a whole lot of connectivity that's very direct. And you see this a lot in these kinds of neighborhoods. And again, we're gonna add, and I'm wondering, we'll go, we'll go 30 through here. And then this is what I want to connect onto the road that goes up the highway. And then we need to find a place to connect up here. So we're gonna go 15 units out approximately, and then we'll make a connection. So what this has effectively done is created a local connection for anyone who lives in this neighborhood, who understands the way that this is laid out, but anyone who doesn't will be very confused and they won't use it as a cut through. So that is the kind of thing you see happening in these sorts of neighborhoods. And then we're gonna divide this up with a cul-de-sac back here. So we'll send this right about back here here and then off in the other direction as well and then in this area again as much as i hate this we are going to add another eyebrow and there we go so we're going to concentrate some of our higher density uses along this road right here we're going to need some pedestrian connections through here but think of some of our apartments and things of that nature that need bigger lots those will be along here next to some of our commercial uses and I think that those are going to have some synergy. We may have something similar back here. We'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. Now let's continue up this way. And before we get into filling this area in, I want to think about this uh, lovely lake up here. We don't want to encroach upon it. And we're going to want to use this as some sort of a park space. So I'm going to create a temporary measuring road. And then we'll again go back 15 units. And this will be the road that we connect to this highway on which might not seem to be the uh, 
the most obvious connection, but we're going to provide access to this public amenity and we will provide access to our neighborhood from this highway without it being completely direct. And then from here, we'll link these two up, which I absolutely despise, <laughs> but it definitely happens. We'll create a bit of a grid pattern here. I don't want this to be this direct. I think we're way too direct as it is. So we're going to reconsider this. We'll back that up. And the way that we're going to make this even less direct is to extend this out and we'll consolidate these intersections here. And we'll use our create connection mode to connect the two of these. And now, unless you're a local, this doesn't even occur to you that this is a, a rational path <laughs> for better or for worse, most likely. And now we need to link up the rest of our roadway network. And we're going to do this in ways that will work, but maybe aren't the most obvious. One of them will be right here. This will be how we make this connection to this road. So we use our curved road tool, find that guideline and then make our connection right through there. And then we are going to want to make another connection. I want to follow this some more. So I'm going to send this out again, 20 units and we'll run this down. And this is where this road will connect in. And now we're going to create another very direct connection to a future neighborhood. So I want to ensure that we're leaving the opportunity to expand in the future. This is something that I think the city would insist upon. So we'll just add this as a very direct connection, 40 units out, and then we'll add this straight through here as well. And there we go. I think we have most of our layout right here and it looks a little crazy, but there is a method to all of this chaos. And I want to explain a bit of why suburban development occurs the way that it does. Obviously, I've talked a lot in the past about saleability of lots, and that is a thing. I mean, a developer is trying to maximize their profit. They're also trying to make a development viable. That's a, a real consideration, especially as the, uh, the price of land and everything keeps uh, increasing. They want to make sure that whatever they're doing, they're able to make their money back and then the profit that they need to make to make this actually make sense for them to do. So they're thinking about that. And then the other thing that they're thinking about is the desirability of living in some of these areas based upon the design. So this might look like a bunch of chaos, but if you're looking at a lot right here, what you're thinking to yourself is, wow, there is no one driving up the street that doesn't live here. And the developer probably sells this as a really nice park. So if even if it's not a park, let's say that this is a small forest back here. That is something that is an, amen an amenity and it raises the value of every single lot around here. So there is a purpose to this. We're seeing that they're providing the connectivity that the city is requesting, but not doing so in a direct way. So that makes it challenging if you're commuting through the area, but if you're a local, it uh, is certainly more desirable that people aren't driving on this, on this road. All of that said, this design adds pressure to our major arterials. So those are things that we're gonna need to think about. And I am going to add one more connection through here because I am who I am. We're going to add one connection right here. There we go. So that is what we have. I want to add some districts now to think about what exactly we're going to be developing in this area. And this will help us just spell it out. So we'll turn on our district names and I'm going to go for the smallest size. Basically everything through here that isn't districted out will be single family residential. So we've got to be really specific. Down here, we're gonna have commercial and our town center. Next, I'm gonna add a district over this entire area. This is gonna be a significant park, not the one that the governor was talking about a few episodes back, but it will still be a very significant park for this area and maybe even some surrounding areas. And then I think that we have an elementary school right here. We're going to plan for an elementary school right about here and a high school for this entire area right here. And then we're gonna plan a couple of areas for high density. For better or for worse, these often get targeted towards some of the lands that are gonna be harder to sell. It's easier to sell undesirable land for multifamily. Part of the reason for that is people's needs and thoughts about their multifamily might be different. They might prioritize access to the highway. So we will add that right here. And we're gonna add that right here. 
Now for our commercial and town center, I didn't specify this, but there will be some high density residential through there as well. And then along this collector, for most of it, we're gonna have commercial. And that leaves the rest of this, which will most likely be single family residential throughout the rest of here. And I know that might make you feel a little bit sick and I, I get it, but it's important to remember, at least in the US, the amount of land that is dedicated to single family uses and it's generally around 70% uh, it, it, across the entire US. In a suburban area, it could be even higher. So I think that we're actually doing a pretty good job here of limiting the amount. The other thing I wanna think about is some of our city services. Those could be in this area. I think we're going to actually add them. We'll, we'll cut a little section back here and we'll have some of our city services. Maybe we'll even cut this off and we'll transition to residential. Now we got two more things to do. I want to add a large district over all of our single family. And then I wanna add some parks into the different neighborhoods here. So let's start out with that big district. And this is a good reminder that we are going to need some sort of name for this community. It's obviously part of Johnson's Creek, but it deserves its own name. So if you've got ideas for either the name of the community, the name of the park, or the name of really anything else through here, the, 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 for instance, this lake, please let me know down in the comments. So initially I was intending on placing the parks right now, but you'll notice that I can't actually place the parks on the planning roads. So we're gonna need to place the parks as we work our way through our phases and as we upgrade our roads. So we'll think about that in just a moment, but what I wanna do right off the bat is start to think about our district styles through here. Now I will be completely upfront with you and tell you that this has been a problem that I've been trying to work through. So we're gonna see if it works and if it doesn't, we'll be forced to plop a bunch of buildings, which is completely fine. My ideal scenario though would be I zone in most of this and then I plop what I have to. So we're gonna go and set a style and this will open up the district style picker. And I've created some styles already. I'll show you what those are, are in just a moment. We have this modern suburban style. Then we have modern, uh, modern suburban TC, that's the town center. And then modern sub suburb twin, which is more of our higher density. So we're gonna only have modern suburban for this large district. And then I wanna have random spawn levels through here because I don't have level one for most of this theme. So this will allow this to still occur things will still spawn in here. And with that in mind, we are going to start upgrading our roads. So right off the bat, we're going to require that this main road through here gets developed. I would imagine that the community says you can't cul-de-sac this off. So you've got to at least develop these. So we're gonna send this right up here and we'll make this a tree lined one way. And then we'll just need to make sure that all of our directions are correct. Only one that's wrong. It's pretty impressive. And then we'll go with a four unit road that's also bi-directional. I'd love to have this with bike lanes. I wonder if that's possible. Not with trees, but I think it might be worth it. We can figure out the trees inside a node controller. And there we go. And this is actually a really appropriate roadway for this area anyway. We don't have parking, but we do have our bike lanes, so we're gonna need to think about off-street off parking for this entire area. Remember, this is supposed to be kind of the commercial heart outside of the you know more big box type stuff that we have over here. So we're definitely gonna need to think about that. I also wanna get some trees along here. So we're gonna go into our line tool. So we'll go Control L. We'll click on a segment and we're going to basically add trees through this tool. So we'll come through here and the first thing I wanna do is set up a prop. The reason I wanna do this is I know that we have some planters. So here's our tree planter. I'm gonna separate these to be about, we'll say 15 meters. And then I will shift these to be on the road. And now we're gonna add a second rule and this one will be trees. And now very similar to what we did over there, we're gonna increase this to 15. And now you see that those are right inside. The offset needs to be the same as well. And there we are. We have the negative 0.1 meter offset. So that is perfect. And what I want to do is copy this to the other side. So I'm going to save this as a template and we'll make this planters 
And then we'll make the, uh, we'll save the other half of it as a, as a template as well. And we'll make this street trees. And now we should be able to draw another line over here. Apply a template. First one will be our planters. And then we'll add a rule, apply that template as street trees. And there you go, the offset is the same. And now the nice thing is we can take this entire section and just copy the markings and control shift V them into place. Now I, re I just remembered, there's a faster way to do this. So we're gonna control shift V this, we have this here. And then I'm gonna select this same area and control shift G this. And this will take this and add it all the way up the rest of the road in between the nodes. So that's probably the fastest way of approaching this. And there we go, we've got that up and down here. This won't work over here because we've got to redo this for this specific street, but it shouldn't be that difficult now that we have our template set up. So I was able to quickly set this up using our templates Then we select this control shift G and we apply this to the entire street. And then I will control shift C this and paste it to the other side. Now for this one, it's on the wrong side. So we're just going to turn this clockwise and that will get it to be perfect for us. And then we again will control shift G this after we accept this. And there we go. And I'm noticing we didn't connect this all the way across. We may want to disconnect some of these, but right now that's not something that we want to do. So there we go. That's looking good. We've got our trees all set up and this road is looking good. I might want to shift this offset a bit though. So I'm gonna go into node controller, hold down shift. And I just want this to line up with this end here. And oh, it's the sidewalk. There's not much we can do about that. The only thing that we could do is really shift this and make it look crazy. And I don't know that we want to do that. Yeah, we're just going to leave that. That's completely fine. All right. Now we want to start developing this area back here. So I want to use our suburban roads for this. So we're going to use our big suburban roads. We've got two different variants available to us. We've obviously got our normal variant and then the cracked worn variant. We're not going to do that. We'll just go with a normal uh, the normal road here and we want to make sure we cross this and then we'll go around and upgrade all of these roads except for the bulbs I want to try one of these to see what that does for us All right now I want to look at those bulbs and let's just compare what this looks like So this is using our big suburban roads So we get sidewalks all the way around here and this is probably gonna sound ridiculous But one of the things that I've argued about more in my career than I hate to admit is those sidewalks on the end of a cul-de-sac bulb the folks who live there do not want to shovel. They'll say that they don't want people walking in front of their place, whatever the case may be. It ends up being a big source, sort of source of friction. So I am curious if there are any streets that we could place on here that would avoid it. It looks like all of them end up with these gigantic sidewalks. So not exactly ideal. Our rural roads, maybe? Yeah, that looks ridiculous. So we're not gonna do that. I guess folks, you're just gonna have to deal with having sidewalks. So we will just use our big suburban roads. I don't think that it looks significantly better. It's actually probably worse than this. Although if we modify the stretch here, maybe it looks better. Yeah, I don't think that it does. So we will stick with this as a big suburban road and we'll upgrade the rest of these as well. Now, the one that might look better is right here. So for our eyebrows, yeah, I think that this might be the one location. No, I think even the eyebrows look better as the big suburban roads. So we'll just upgrade all of these to be big suburban roads. And there we go. So now we can finally add our parks. So we're gonna go through and obviously everyone needs a dog park. So we're gonna add one of those. And we need to remember that this gigantic thing right here is a park. I don't think we're gonna build that just yet. That will be something that comes down the line because the developer is gonna do everything they can to keep this on the cheap right now. They, they can't afford much of anything. So we'll add in maybe a couple of big parks with trees, some playground equipment, and keep it pretty bare bones. And that's pretty good parks coverage. Now the part that I've been nervous about. So we set up our theme and I just, I'm gonna try to get this to work. I'm not 100% sure that it will. We're also, also gonna need to develop a bit of commercial along here as well. So we'll get to that in just a moment. And there are areas like this so when we looked at our zoning grid, this kind of breaks everything. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and disable zoning along here. So we'll use our zoning adjuster and say disable zoning. And then in some other locations like this, I'm gonna also disable zoning. 
And it's interesting when you click this, it switches the side of the trees. I never realized it would do that. But that's pretty neat functionality there. But this opens up this entire block right here for us to develop. And then I'll do the exact same thing right here. So this is the sort of thing where we're getting we're getting really picky with it, but we should probably be thinking about these things. Now I'm going to zone and we'll see what springs in. Now, before I do this, I want to talk a little bit about some issues that I've been having in the build. So generally to keep Clearwater County looking good after I switched from building themes to district styles, I had to go into Rico and modify some settings. In Rico, under growable options, you can say prevent styles from removing existing buildings. So I did this so that if there were any building themes that I didn't correctly implement in our old districts, we didn't lose things. So that's been really helpful in the older parts of the city, but I've been seeing that it causes issues in newer parts. So I am going to zone this. We'll see what happens and I'll show you actually what's in this new theme. So district themes is a unified UI DS edit. And I mentioned that our new theme is called modern suburban. So I switched this to just included so we can see that the buildings that are in here. So I've got a variety of homes through here. I've got some ranch homes, some of the American eclectic stuff and just a whole bunch of stuff that feels a little bit more contemporary variety of styles. There are some level one buildings, but not many. So it's we've got these new smiles assets that were at the front of the workshop right now. And then a few other uh, King Leno assets that I thought looked really nice as well. Not a ton of variety, but enough to make this feel unique. And I didn't want to include any of the construction buildings from American Eclectic because I was having all sorts of problems with those. So all of that said, we're going to go ahead and zone some of this in and we are going to pause it for just a moment. And that's because we don't have utilities through here. So I'm going to go ahead and zone basically everything that is kind of off to the side like this. Then we'll add in our utilities and get things running again. And honestly, there's a lot here that's going to be really difficult to zone. So I think that we'll but basically avoid it because it's just not worth it. So all of this stuff is pretty broken looking. So we're going to need to do that on our own. Let's go ahead and get some water pipes and we'll place them underneath the road right where they belong. And now I'm going to run this again and we'll get some power run to this area and we'll use some of our suburban power lines. And I basically want to connect from here. Oh, I stopped the river. We're going to need to fix that. We will uh, add this right here, right along the road. All right, and I decided to change things up here a bit. So we've necked this down and we have a narrower bridge and that allows us to extend our four lanes over here to have a dedicated turn line. It all makes a bit more sense. The other thing that I think that we could see happening is maybe a conversation with the city about upgrading this to be that that collector through here. So we're going to do that here as well. And of course, I've disabled zoning, so that's not great. I don't know if that was actually in use over here. Either way, what I think we're going to do, it's historical, so it shouldn't go away. It should be fine. If it does go away, we will add that back in. But we've got this here and we've got all sorts of power problems. We're going to add a temporary power line just to get this thing going. And this is a good example of what I was experiencing when I was testing this out a bit. I'm not seeing things fill in. And if we go and take a look at our demand, it's still very, very high. So I'm not sure why some of these properties aren't developing, but we're just going to plop some buildings in here to to get it to, to fill in a bit. And hopefully that will help us get some of these properties to fill in as well. So I don't want to place anything there unless we have to, but we're going to place some of the other ones. So we're going to just use find it for this. And I'm going to separate this down to some of our growable residential. And I know that something that we could use is we could use ranch as a term. And that will give us a number of excellent options for ranches. I'm going to create a new custom tag though. So we will go ahead and show our create custom tag panel. And what I want to do is make a new one. So we'll click on this in the corner here and then we'll make a new one. And we're going to call this modern suburb hit enter. So now that we have that, we should be able to go through and tag the rest of our assets and we can just hit the plus here and that will add the modern. And actually that because I use that as two words, <laughs> we've actually got modern and suburb. So be careful with that. Only use one word or use an underspace, an underscore or something of that nature. And we'll just get rid of suburb and make that tag go away. And now I'm going to look for some of our American Eclectic and we'll do the exact same thing with these. 
And the nice thing is as you're doing this, you can see what you've already tagged because it has that tag there. So now I know that this one isn't within that set. So that's how you can keep this organized because as you add to these lists, it can be quite intimidating. And then to make sure that this is completely lined up, I've actually pulled up District Styles Editor and I'm going down the list to make sure I have everything because some of these are really difficult to find. Like this asset right here is actually from an asset creator called Chuckles. I, I swear, just a crazy coincidence. But either way, we're adding these into this set as well. And obviously I wouldn't be able to remember 90s 1a that's what that actually is so that is these this is how we're going to find it so we're just popping that up and that's in the unified ui ds editor and we can have both of these up at the exact same time and there we go we've got them all in here there are 50 homes in this set which i think is a good number if we want this to feel like it's a bring your own builder sort of development so that would be a development where there are all of these plots and it, the, basically you would contract out with your own developer your own builder to develop your home and there would be an approved set of, of plans or, or, or whatnot that is, you know, 50 deep. So here we go. Now I'm going to refresh this because I'm not seeing this in the list. So we'll get rid of this and then we'll refresh our tags and you can see that modern suburb is there. So we can select this and then you can set your random button to whatever you want. I have set mine to be the question mark button. So what that will do is I'll be able to select this and then hit question and I'll be able to shuffle through all of these. So if I see one that doesn't quite fit, I can move on. So that's what we're gonna do, just go through and plop a bunch of these. And this is where this really shines. We're able to add right to the end of a cul-de-sac bulb. Obviously you can't do this in vanilla, but if you have a modded game like this and you're plopping a bunch of your uh, assets, you're able to do this quite easily. And the end result is that it looks very natural and very nice. So there we go. I'm going to fill in most of the rest of this but i want to really focus before we before i just add a bunch of these in on these eyebrows and why i think they're so important we're going to go for the four by fours and when i say important i don't mean that i like these because i don't <laughs> i think that they're they're kind of a kind of a uh, it can be kind of problematic but they still are very popular because you can do this so let's first of all not have the same home <laughs> we can we can mix things up a little bit We'll hit the question mark key and get a couple of different options. And I actually like this because of the way that the driveways line up. We'll hit M, spin this around. And rather than fitting one house right here, you're able to fit three. And that is the whole point of this. All right, that is not the fastest way to go about developing a neighborhood, but it does feel very natural. So I'm not going to go crazy with fences. Some of these assets already have them, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. What I am gonna do though is think about landscaping. So we are gonna just copy some of our forests here. We'll go in to move it and just grab some of these using our marquee selection tool. And I'll control C this. I'll make sure anarchy is off and we'll just pop some of these through here. And I just want there to be dense, natural looking landscaping in between the homes. And then afterwards, I'm going to go on top of the homes to make sure that we're not in folks' backyard with the trees more than we should be. And you might wonder why I'm not using the forestry brush. The main reason is I don't feel like this is set up very well. So if we zoom in, I'm gonna add a few things through here just to make it really, really dense. But what you'll notice is that these trees aren't exactly the same. And I think this is part of the winter conversion mess that I've created for myself is that my trees just aren't the same anymore as I continue to replace them over and over throughout the build. This makes me really excited by the potential of there being seasons in City Skylines 2 because obviously it is a bit of a problem in <laughs> City Skylines 1 if you try to have seasons. Now I'm going to turn the brush strength up way, way up and we're going to turn our size way, way down. And I just want to go over where I've placed the homes so that we're not encroaching too much. Give these folks some backyards. And I think, you know, we have such great landscaping now that came with the game. I'm inclined to just use some of that. So we'll just add in maybe a row of pine trees around here. Whoa, not like that, though. <laughs> There we go. Nothing all that fancy, but just a little something to make this feel 
a little bit special. And that's how some of these lots gain their value. We'll also open up some river views to some of these lots. There we go, I like that. Now I wanna add in just a couple of trail connections and that's the sort of thing that I would expect to see back here. Well, so we'll have some paths kind of meandering through here. Very useful for the locals, maybe not so useful for uh, anyone else. And certainly the kind of thing that you wouldn't get after the fact. So if you're gonna add in these sorts of paths, you do it now because no one really gets excited to have a path added to this side of their home. They look at it as kind of an encroachment on their privacy and whatnot, so. Now the one thing is, uh, those just look terrible with this particular road asset. So I will I will call a mulligan on that. We're not gonna do that, uh, which which stinks. I will, I will readily admit that. But when we do add our park through here, we'll make sure that we've got connections to our smaller parks. For the time being though, I think this is how we leave it. And then the other thing I wanna do is think a bit about our main street right here. Now I did again set up a theme for this. We're gonna see if it'll work. It didn't work great there. So I'm not sure why it would be any different in this location, but we're gonna do it anyway. So under in our commercial district, we'll go to style and we'll go to suburban town center, suburban TC, save this. Now, the one thing to know with district styles is that let's say you have a bunch of buildings. So these, I've got a whole bunch of wall to wall buildings in here. And then I've also got some buildings that are not wall to wall. And then I've got a lot of our shopping center buildings. So it's not going to allow all of those to spawn. So if I go ahead and make this just a commercial and I don't apply wall to wall, we will simply get a bunch of these commercial mall buildings through there. I'm fine with that. If I were to place high density though, which I don't have any high density buildings in here outside of our wall to wall stuff, which I don't even know, that's not even high density, it's whatever. Uh, we'll start to see some random high density buildings spawning in. So I don't want that to happen. So we're gonna just need to be really conscientious about what we're placing here. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a variety of commercial, different sizes, and we're gonna need to, to, to send a power line over here. And I'm paying close attention to the district because I don't want this to inadvertently uh, end up spilling off and then having random things pop in. I'm going to make this wall to wall for our office because I know that I have office wall to wall in here. Not really much demand for this. So I don't know how much we're going to place, just a couple, but we'll, we'll make sure that we have something that can spawn here. And then I'm going to kind of carefully place some of this commercial through here. And I'm also going to make this residential wall to wall. So then we have a mix of our mall buildings, our residential wall to wall, and then our office wall to wall. So I think it's a nice mix through here. And I think they're gonna look pretty natural together. So let's see how these look. You can see that even with this mix of buildings, they just all fit nicely together. So that's what we were going for, having a nice mix of buildings. We've got a mixture of, this is a residential wall to wall building. We've got some of our mall buildings and they just all go nicely together. So I'm gonna go up and down this street and we'll stop it at our district boundary. So again, that's right here. And then I'm gonna get rid of this power line temporarily and we're gonna add in some more of our single family uses along here. And I'm sure you've been to a small town that's like this. We're gonna have kind of the same setup in this suburban area. Now I don't want all two U buildings, so we'll get rid of that option. All right, and what I've basically done here is I'm avoiding this area, which I know is our city services complex, but I've added a small downtown right here. So it's kind of a nice little setup here. And you see that we've got, we're, we have that transition in density. So we're going from our downtown and then it breaks down into our lower density uses, which is kind of what you'd expect to see as you gradually transition into a whole bunch of residential. So I'm going to let this build out for just a few minutes and finish this area and then we'll be right back. And there we go. And I decided to change things up a little bit. Ch plans are always flexible. And what I decided is rather than trying to fit some of these wall to wall buildings along this area, we've added a bunch of single family homes along this. Is this the greatest place to <laughs> be a homeowner? I don't know, but I do think that you, you see things like this and for certain people, this might be very desirable. Maybe you want to live along the bike facility and that matters a lot to you. You want a close distance to this uh, this area down here so you can get to you know, a restaurant or uh, a brew pub. 
uh, with, with a quick walk. And that for some people will mean that they're okay living in this sort of environment. So different strokes for different folks. And we are definitely going to accommodate everyone and all of their different preferences in the community. Now I want to again, run some evergreens down the center here and we'll space those about 10 meters once again. There we go. And I'm looking at this and I realize I made one mistake. We've got three lanes here and we should probably get that back down to two. That wasn't my intention. That said, it's going to screw up all of our trees. So I am going to upgrade this and it's not screwing up our trees. That is neat. That is good to know so that the trees are actually staying with the road segments. So that is super nice. And when they are on the wrong side, all I've got to do is upgrade it one more time. And I might call this little segment here kind of a little happy accident because I think it's fine. We've got an extra turn lane here then, and that's completely acceptable. And that is phase one of our development. Quite a bit of it in place, but I think that there are many, many things that are missing. And I, I, did, I just do want to place one city service. We're not going to place many right now because we don't have a lot of money, but we, we, what we are going to do, and, and I mean that is hypothetical money. Obviously, we got six million in the bank right now. We're fine. We're going to place a fire watchtower though. And that'll kind of cover this forested area. We added a bunch of trees and you just, you know who I am. I like to burn things down and we don't want to do that any more than we have to. But this is looking really, really good. I think all that we can do right now is take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. Like I always like to do, I just want to take a look at this at night. And one of the things you can tell about the suburban roads is, holy cow, there is no light. So that's something that we might may want to think about with this road. I don't know that that is exactly what I would uh, I would hope for in this area. I don't want to do everything by hand, but one thing that we might want to consider, I just want to, it's so dark I can't see anything. We'll take a look and, ah, dummy light is the default. I'm wondering what light dummy two is. <laughs> it's no different. Maybe we do something like that. So this is the North American freeway light. That's not exactly decorative. Let's do something decorative. Actually, this Parisian lamp. Yeah, this isn't going to be, uh, it's not going to provide the most light, but it will provide some. Obviously, if it were me, <laughs> I, I like more light on streets. But I know that that's not what everyone wants. I'm going to also turn off collisions so we don't screw everything up through here. Um, I like there to be more light. I think that it's safer and it's one of the ways that you can design for safety. But I also understand that some folks, they just want to live in a place that's darker. It is better for wildlife and things of that nature. So there are certainly reasons and rationale for doing this. That said, look at how dark this is. Absolutely wild. In fact, I can't even tell where I'm upgrading. So I'm going to turn the time of day to something a little bit <laughs> a little bit lighter and it's not a lot of light but at least if you were on the sidewalk here and it's flat it's flickering <laughs> it's perfect you would be able to see the lights obviously a little bit closer could be desirable but this is probably just fine those are very tall though that's my one critique i might end up changing those off camera but i think for the time being, it will do the trick for us. And let me know what you think about that. If you think I should just leave them, that's that's. Uh, let me know in the comments. All of that said, I do think that we've made some great progress here, and I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so, and I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. It really is a privilege to bring these videos to you. Take care. Bye-bye.